So it is my pleasure to introduce our first speakers this evening from the California Digital Library. Um, CDL are very close partners of us in research IT, as well as many, many other um, folks on campus. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to Marisa Strong, who is an application development manager, and to Terry Brady, who is a senior software developer. So welcome. Thanks, Amy. I am going to share my screen. So hopefully I've got this going on. Um, so thanks for that introduction, uh, Amy. Um, we're going to be sharing today um, our experience with leveraging pre-signed URLs in the merit preservation system, which is developed and hosted here at the California Digital Library, also known as CDL. Um, so if you don't know about CDL, we are a system-wide resource and we sit within the Office of the President and we partner with all of the 10 campuses uh, to amplify the work that is being done at the research programs and all of the campus libraries. Uh, we also uh, provide programs um, through um, our publishing access and digitization. Uh, we have our e-scholarship um, platform that provides open access for journals and ETDs. Our discovery and delivery uh, group uh, works with core library services. Um, they're currently working on a system-wide integrated library system. Our collections and licensing program uh, focuses on the uh, shared collections across all of the 10 campuses and manages um, all the journal subscriptions and other types of subscriptions um, across all of the UCs. And they're doing transformative work there. I'm sure you've heard about them in the news, working with Springer Nature and Elsevier um, recently. And then our group, the UC Curation Center, um, which works with uh, digital curation, we're all supported by the infrastructure and application support team, which provides um, our AWS infrastructure um, for all of the programs and the work that we do. So the UC3, um, we work with uh, research data um, throughout its whole life cycle from planning, maintaining, and preserving, and then also um, finding value in all of the uh, research uh, data you know, doing metrics on, on the content that we, that we maintain and preserve. Um, our areas of focus um, deal with research data management, and we have a tool called DMP tool that provides guidance around managing your data. Uh, data publishing, also um, we have Dryad to support our data publishing efforts. Uh, the Carpentries program, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, uh, which provides data and software skills for research IT and librarians um, across the campuses and beyond. Persistent identifiers uh, provides identifiers so, as, so that we can connect all of our research outputs together. Um, identifiers for journals, um, for research organizations and the like. Uh, we use EasyID to support that and also our ROAR research organization repository. And then digital preservation, which is Merit is focused upon. Um, so Merit is a, a system. It's made up of nine microservices that live on 24 production servers. servers so it's quite com large and complex. Um, we house 150 terabytes of unique content. Um, those are with, um, housed within like 2.3 million objects, which they themselves have about 50 million files um, within those objects. Some of the objects are really large, um, over 250 gigabytes, um, and they're getting larger um, every day that we're, that we're working with this content. And we are a backbone for a lot of other services um, within CDL and, and for the campuses um, with working digital asset management systems and the like. So Merit's been around, um, it's evolved over the years. Um, it's been around, uh, started out in 2006 uh, as the DPR, was the precursor system. And we moved more into a cloud infrastructure um, in 2011 um, with our curation microservices based system um, when we started using cloud storage from San Diego Supercomputer. And now um, in 2015, we actually transitioned from physical servers into AWS cloud. Um, environment. And so now currently we're looking at leveraging uh, different uh, cloud platform development patterns that we can use to make our merit repository service more scalable and maintainable going forward. And so uh, Terry's going to be talking about one of the challenges that we've run into 
in this environment. So Merit is a digital preservation system focused on decades long storage of content. And we currently utilize three storage providers. We use Amazon, we use Minio, and we use Wasabi. And we store digital files. We also have the notion of an object in Merit, and an object contains one or more digital files and some metadata describing that object. So the challenge that we've been running into recently is we've got ever increasing volumes of content, ever increasing size of the objects that we're managing and ever increasing amounts of user traffic. So in, as we have these, particularly these really large files that we're dealing with, working with those ties up existing resources that we have and it makes it more difficult to perform system maintenance when we've got long running retrievals of content. So I want to tell a little story of how we simplified our system using pre-signed URLs, a, a cloud technology that uh, we found very handy. So I'll first give you a, a little overview of what a pre-signed URL is. So here we have a file, a digital file living in cloud storage that's not publicly available. Uh, our initial approach was to use a web server to grant access to that file. So a user would come and request the file from the web server we would, the web server would retrieve the file and then deliver the content to the user. And, but a challenge is what if that file that we're transferring is like 50 gigabytes in size, which um, every once in a while we come across in our system. It's a, there's a lot of traffic being sent through that web server. So the new approach we took was to use pre-signed URLs. And fortunately, this technology is supported by the three cloud providers that we uh, utilize. So user, in this instance, the user requests a file from a web server. The web server asks for a pre-signed URL from the storage service. We then deliver that pre-signed URL back to the user and the user retrieves the file directly from cloud storage. A couple of things about pre-signed URLs, they're good for a limited amount of time. So once you generate one, you can also set a, a threshold of time for how long it's good and usable. Also, a pre-signed URL tends to be very complex and long in, its, in the URL string, so it's unlikely to be spoofed or guessed by a malicious user. So we added pre-signed uh, requests for digital files in both our Merit system and our Dryad system. So a user requests a digital file, we, we send that into the system, and the user is then redirected to a pre-signed URL to deliver the content. So that was our easy use case. Our more complex use case was dealing with what I described to you are, are what we call our merit objects. So a merit object may contain one digital file or it could contain thousands or tens of thousands of files. Merit objects uh, need to be assembled into a zip file and returned as a single container to the user. And some requests are very large, as some as large as 200 gigabytes in size. So the, before we implemented pre-signed URLs, we had two different software paths to handle these requests. And they, they varied by the size of the object being processed. So our, our basic implementation was a user would ask for an object from the system. We would then assemble that object on our servers into a zip file. We would then deliver that zip file back to the end user, again, pushing all that traffic through our applications. And so here is a view of the Merit user interface where someone has clicked the download object and a zip file has been retrieved. In the case of really large files, we had a different workflow. So the user would ask for the object. We would then instead assemble the object on cloud storage into a zip file. Next, we would email the user to tell them that their zip file was ready and prepared. And this was particularly problematic. Some, many of our Dryad users had difficulty receiving email, particularly the uh, researchers in China had trouble getting email notifications that their data sets were ready. And uh, so this created a poor user experience. Um, here's an example of what we used to do for large objects. We would prompt the user to enter their email address, and then we would deliver them an email telling them their content was ready. And once they receive that email, they could stream the file. But with pre-signed URLs, we came up with a single solution for objects of any size. So we request the object. 
uh, what, the next thing we would do is we would return what we called a token back to the end user. And uh, what this token did was it said, I'll, I'll respond to your request when I'm ready to respond. So this gave us the ability to schedule and sequence um, how we wanted to respond to user requests. So what we would then do is present a dialog box to the user telling them your content will be ready and we'd give them sort of a time estimate of how long it would take to prepare that content. When the content was ready, we would, we would assemble it on cloud storage. We would assemble it in a container of cloud storage that would expire after a period of one to two days. We then would return the pre-signed URL back to the end user for that container. And uh, the user interface would then, once the content was ready, present a download link to the end user. And from there, the end user could stream the content directly from cloud storage. So, and we found in terms of costs, the, the, um, the cost of implementing this really didn't, it didn't fundamentally change the way we were storing the master copy of our files, but we did have some increase in size for that temporary creation of cloud objects that we wanted to serve up to users. Um, but at the same time, we, we saw a significant decrease in traffic through our application servers. Also, we found since implementing this change, we found our, release pro our software release process has been greatly simplified. So, you know, we reduced data throughput on our Merit and Dryad services at CDL. We've had more flexibility in how we deploy our backend services. We've had an improved user experience for our Dryad users. And now the next challenge we want to tackle is how to make use of this pre-signed URL technology on the input side, because those large files I described to you, not only do we have to deliver those, but we need to have a good and reliable way to get files of that size into the system. And we want to apply a similar technology to solve that problem. If you're curious, um, there's more information about uh, both the Merit system, a link to our code base, and a link to particularly the um, endpoints in our APIs that we designed to implement this solution. And I'll, have, I'll be sharing out a link to this presentation on the Meetup site. Thank you so much to Marissa and Terry for that great presentation. And I would like to open it up for any questions or comments or feedback about this awesome work. You're welcome to unmute yourself and ask, um, or if you feel more comfortable in the chat, I would be happy to read it. Hey, uh, this, this is Sean, thanks. Awesome presentation. I'm kind of curious of, um, you know, why I might've touched on this, but I didn't, I didn't catch it. Like, what was the decision to go uh, forward with like AWS versus, uh, you know, even like GCP or, or Azure? Was it just purely familiarity with the current, with AWS or was it from a cost perspective or kind of what was your thought process there? So Marissa. more along the lines, yeah, with um, going to AWS, it was a CDL wide decision and also AWS was being, um, leveraged at the UCOP IT level. And so there were already some negotiations in place and agreements uh, going there. And so having some consistency with uh, working with UCOP IT and with what we were doing. And um, in, in terms of the decisions around Google uh, Cloud Computing, at the, at the time, um, it wasn't as robust. AWS was kind of leading the marketplace at that time around 2014. I mean, there was about six years of, of planning and and actually implementing all of, migrating all of our servers and infrastructure over to AWS. So I just think that a Google platform, cloud platform at that time just wasn't as robust as, as it is now. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing that's been particularly interesting with this pre-signed URL functionality, the other two cloud storage providers that we make use of, they implement the same API as Amazon S3. So it's it's been great to be able to use essentially the same code to get that functionality from three different uh, cloud storage providers. I've got a question here. Um, out of curiosity, what is the average daily volume of data being downloaded out of the system? 
you know, that's, that is uh, something that we wish we had more ready access to. Um, we have more on a, an occasional basis run reports looking at a snapshot of a day or a week, uh, but we don't, we don't have a, a ready dashboard, so I can't quote that for you. I was really impressed with the amount that you have in the system. That's incredible. Yes, and it's been um, ever increasing. I think just, I don't know how much specifically we've increased by in the last year, but it's just been kind of just really growing and growing, especially with the Dryad repository, um, which content goes into Dryad and then is preserved in Merit. Um, it's just really been growing as people more deposit more data sets into Dryad. So we have a question in the chat. Um, do you still have a relationship with the state library? Um, UC3 itself is not working directly with the state library. There are some collections um, that we do um, store within Merit. Um, there's other relationships that we have with the state library in terms of web archiving and that falls in underneath our collections and licensing program um, where they are doing um, some archiving of government documents um, and the like. Thank you. And can the cost that you mentioned um, be built into grant proposals is another question. There are some uh, challenges with that because uh, costs are ongoing and sustaining and usually with grant proposals, it's you usually can't have like ongoing costs included in the grant proposals. So we're looking at some ways that we can um, curtail that and um, in the future. So those are some uh, things that we're looking at right now to, to provide that going forward because we know that that is problematic. Awesome, thank you. Um, I guess I'm wondering um, if you were to do this over again, would you do anything differently? I would say for me, I, I would have also th been thinking about the um, input side, taking advantage of the pre-signed URLs um, on that side of our workflow and kind of doing it, doing it as an even larger project rather than coming back and, and following it all along later, just because it, it when, once we implemented this, it felt like it made so much sense. Uh, would like to have it available on the other end. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you very, very much for your presentation and thanks folks for your questions.